G'day, welcome to another episode of Country Life on the Coast. My name is Sean, and on today's episode, we're gonna build a wheelbarrow planter. So it's my mum's birthday coming up, and I thought I would make her something this year instead of just going out and buying it. So a little while ago, we've picked up some old fencing material that was heading to the dump. And so I've been doing projects to repurpose it. Today, we're gonna to build ourselves a wheelbarrow or what looks like a wheelbarrow anyway, for a planter box for some plants and flowers that will stick in it. So I have one piece already sanded down from a previous project. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the ends off, which is the old rotten timbers. And then we'll plane and sand everything down, get it looking more like this nice piece of timber. So we'll start there. Well, there we go. So our fence palings have come up looking fantastic. It's amazing what some beautiful hardwood was used to make fence palings. And then, you know, a bit of a plane and a sand cleanup, they've come up really well. So I've got seven palings here that are all sanded and planed down. Once I've got everything cut and sort of ready to go together, I'll give it one final sand as well, just to smooth it right off. For the time being, it's time to start cutting everything to the sizes that we're going to use. So this is my planter that I'm going to use. Obviously put the plants in here and then have a timber surround around it that will sort of be the tub of the wheelbarrow. So this, for me, the dimensions I'm using are basically to cater for the timber to come right to the top and sort of try and hide the plastic a bit, make it look like a real timber wheelbarrow. This pot is sort of good too because it's got a spot for the bottom where it can hold extra water uh, so you don't have to sort of keep an eye on it as much. So we're referencing our sizing based on this. So I think we'll make the box for that first and that's what these three pieces of timber for. We'll stack them one on top of the other. So we'll measure that We'll then start cutting these and yeah, we'll start putting this together. I was just about to get my saw out and start cutting these timbers. And then I realized what I've done is I only have enough timber for one long side and one straight side. And my other bits of timber are for the main handle rail parts of it and the wheel and those sorts of things. So I'm gonna to have to go and sand and plane three more boards, I think, to have enough timber for this. I thought I'd finished all the planing and sanding all the dust, but no, nope, we'll do a little bit more. Okay guys, well, just a bit of an update and where we're heading next. So we've cut out all six for our side pieces that will go around the um, plastic pot. So we've got three of these sides cut out for the pot as well. I now need to get back and sand that timber, but when I found those, the other palings to use, where I need to trim them down and sand them, uh, they've been at the bottom of the pile and they're actually still a bit damp. So I'm just gonna leave them out in the sun and see if that'll dry them out enough rather than just cut and sand straight into them. So we'll leave those for, for a little while now. Uh, we'll work on the other things. So uh, I've got my timbers here. These are all cut to the right length now. 
for the, uh, the handles and the main rail part. So these are 1.2 meters, 1200 mil. Uh, they'll be the right length for me for the pot that we're using. So basically all of this is so far ready to go apart from a final sand. Uh, this piece of timber here, it's got a real sort of wave to it. Not the best piece of timber around, but what I'm gonna use it for is actually gonna make a bit of a wheel uh, for the front of the wheelbarrow. Again, all of this is just decorative. It's just gonna sit there obviously. Um, and so the, this piece having a real wave to it, I think it'll be okay to be used for the wheel. So my plan for the wheel is to make it 400 mil diameter and to make it a double thickness. And basically that will mean I'll just run one row of timbers one way and on the second layer, run it the opposite way. And then I can just screw it all together and that'll hold it all together as well. So now we've got all our timbers sanded down and planed down. They look fantastic. So now we'll cut them down to size. So I'll just sort of work out what's gonna be what, and then we'll cut them to size. And then we can start thinking about putting it together. Guys, well, we've got everything laid out and grouped together. What's what? What I'm gonna do now is just do my final sand of everything before I put it together. And probably not the right way to do things, but it works and I've done it before. I'm just gonna use my belt sander upside down. And then this way I can just sort of, you know, as it's running, just sand everything, make it nice and smooth, get rid of any splinters. There will be times when I turn my belt sander over and just sand off the flat bits as well um, but yeah I've done this a few times before it seems to work quite well you've just got to you know, make do with the tools you've got sometimes so this will work uh, I think I'll mask up again I'm not sure what is used in fence paling certainly this stuff that I've got is probably 30 years old uh, I don't know what they used to treat it with and that's why I've always worn a mask whenever I'm sanding with it in particular and there's a lot of dust around um, so yeah we'll put our masks on and protect their eyes and ears and we'll start sanding. Oh well, the sanding has finally been finished. I feel like I've been sanding for hours, but anyway. We've got everything sanded down, no more splinters that I can feel, smoothed off everything, rounded all the edges. Hopefully we're ready to start putting this together. So I've laid out my four sides for the box that's gonna go around the planter itself, uh, which basically you could call the wheelbarrow tub, I suppose. And so I've got these little cutouts that I'm gonna to use to uh, I'll glue that down to it and then screw it all as well. I think we're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, we're ready to go. Let's do this. So we've got our four sides all glued and screwed together and I've sat this here and I've just got some packers inside here to hold it up and I was looking and considering how I'm going to attach this together so my original plan was just to drill and screw through and just basically it will screw into the end grain here and I wasn't sure how strong that would be so I've just got a couple of pieces of scrap that I've just drilled and screwed together and it does seem to be quite strong. When I put the bracing on here, I was using 25 mil screws. I've got some 30 mil screws, so I've just used that here just for a little bit better bite. 
Uh, it seems to certainly be strong enough. Thought it might have been an issue going into the end grain of it, but come by that, it, it seems to work pretty well. And then, yeah, just square this up and we'll start drilling and screwing this together. All right, our box is now fully together. I've screwed everything I was going to. That's now done. What I'm gonna do, because I've still got a little bit of time today, I'm gonna screw all the uh, pieces of tin together that are gonna make the wheel. So I cut all this out earlier today. So the wheel itself, I, I measured out to be 380 millimeters, the diameter of it. So I've put the bottom layer sitting one way and then the other way perpendicular to it. Just try and help sort of support it uh, as I screw this together. So with the 380 millimeter diameter, I've sort of roughly marked out where the circle is gonna go. I'll mark it properly later, but for the moment, I've just worked out where I can put screws where it's not gonna interfere um, when I cut it out. Obviously, I don't want the screw in that spot. Um, so we're ready to go. I've put dots all over this. So now again, I'll just drill it all and screw it together. Well, hey guys, it's a new day. The sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, and we're gonna continue building our wheelbarrow planter. So the box is done, and I'm gonna cut this piece of timber down and just put some slats along the bottom of this as a base for it. And also that will help just sort of make this more rigid to, to sort of lock it in better. Uh, and also it will give me a point to fix to when I put the rails on it as well, or the, the handles of the wheelbarrow. So we'll do that soon. The first thing we're gonna do this morning though is make the front wheel, finish it. Right guys, well the wheel is now done. I've just got to sand that down. So we'll do that a little bit later. And on our box, we've mounted all our supports at the bottom. So that's good to go. Time to look at making the rest of the wheelbarrow. So we've got our two main uh, beams, rails, whatever we want to call them. So the wheel's gonna sit obviously at this end. We'll drill a hole through. Uh, I'll probably use a bit of dowel or something just to mount the wheel. So I think now what we'll do is we'll sand the wheel down, finish that off, and then work out how we're gonna install it and mount it on these. Here we are, this is the wheelbarrow planter, basically finished. I've drilled some holes through the box into the rails, but I haven't screwed them together yet because I'm gonna pull it apart now. We'll take the box off it anyway, and we'll put a coat of polyurethane on it 
That will just help to bring the, the colours out more and help it to last longer as well. So, so far, I'm really happy with it. I think it looks really good. I think now we'll uh, set it all up on my workbench here and get ready to put this coat of polyurethane on it. So here we are, we're all set up. So this is what it looks like before we put the polyurethane on it. Got it all sitting up off the bench. So let's give this a coat and see how it comes out afterwards. Here we are, we have two coats of polyurethane on. As I was putting on the first coat, I ran out of uh, polyurethane in my tub and then had to spend, I don't know, half an hour or more trying to find the tin that had the rest of it. I gotta do a shed clean up, I think, so I can find everything again. But anyway, we found it and we're able to put two coats on everything now. It's all dry to the touch. It's come up looking fantastic. So now is the final assembly of it. So I'll put the wheel on first. Now, what I've done is just on the piece of dowel that I was using for like the axle, uh, I've just got a couple little split pins in it. So I'll pull one out, slide it through, and then just put the other one, and that would just help hold it all together. Um, basically, we'll stop it ever falling apart. And then we'll fold those around just so it won't come back out. Uh, and then we will lift the box up and sit it on and screw the box down. So let's do our final assembly. There we go. So there is my wheelbarrow planter. I think it looks fantastic. Oh, I'm so happy with how well some old fence palings have come up. Remember, this was all old fence palings that were heading for the dump that we've just cleaned up, sanded, and spent a bit of time on, basically. So I think the next thing to do is we'll get some potting mix and we'll get some plants and put in here and then it'll be totally done, but eh, I'm extremely happy with how well that's come up. So there we go, there's the wheelbarrow planter, all finished, got the planter now in and some beautiful flowers and things. It all looks fantastic, I'm really happy with it. Quite a cheap build too, because all of this timber was free. Remember, that was heading for the dump, so we were able to repurpose it and make a cool gift from it. But that's all we have in this episode. So thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. That'd be awesome. And we'll catch you next time. God bless.